ESPN Sports. This is Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Hello everyone and welcome to Grizzly Insider here on the Montana Television Network. I'm your host, Kyle Hansen. It's our final Grizzly Insider of the year and the regular season is officially in the books for the Montana programs and the Big Sky Conference. The Grizzmen wrapped up a weird final stretch with a pair of wins while the Lady Grizz lost a pair of games but closed out the season with a win over Idaho on Monday. We'll be joined by head coaches Travis DeCure and Brian Holsinger and Grizz senior guard Josh Vazquez also joins us in studio to talk about the season while all three preview the upcoming Big Sky Tournament in Boise. But first, as always, let's look back at the week in UM basketball. The end of the regular season was anything but orthodox for the Montana programs. The Grizzmen saw their game against Portland State last Thursday postponed due to weather and travel issues, and that game was ultimately not made up. So UM hosted Sac State on Saturday on senior night, and their lone honoree before the game was Bozeman native and five-year stalwart Mac Anderson. The Hornets won the first meeting between the two teams, but UM jumped out fast as the Grizz were connecting early from distance. The Hornets eventually found a groove and retook the lead. But from there, it was back and forth, and the teams ultimately went into halftime tied 40 to 40. The second half was a similar story as the two programs traded blows. But with 29 seconds to go, On and Moody banked in a jumper to give Montana a one point lead, and the Grizzlies iced the game with free throws down the stretch as they topped the Hornets 74 to 72. The Grizz would go on to beat Idaho 68 to 53 on Monday on the road as they closed out the regular season with seven wins in their final eight games to finish 10 and 7 in league play and as the number four seed heading into the Big Sky Tournament. The Lady Grizz were on the road heading into the weekend, and though their game against Portland State still happened, UM had a brutal trip to get to the game as weather impacted their travel leading up to just hours before game time last Thursday. The Lady Grizz would lose 74-72 to to the Vikings in overtime and would then travel to Sac State where they lost again 63-56. to But UM bounced back on Monday at home as they celebrated senior night for Sammy Fatkin and Katarina Chineke. Fatkin had a double-double of 21 points and 12 boards, while five total Lady Grizz players scored in double figures as UM closed out the regular season with an 85-82 win over Idaho as they finished 10-8 in Big Sky play and head into the tournament as the number five seed. Coming up, Travis Dekir joins us in studio to look ahead to Boise. That's next on Grizzly Insider. There's more coverage of the Grizzlies online anytime at montanasports.com. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. We're back on Grizzly Insider, and we'll start off with Grizz men's basketball coach, Travis Akir. Travis, coming off a late night, but a win over Idaho. Can you just uh, walk me through what that win was like for you guys? Great win. Uh, slow start. Um, kind of been our Achilles heel here lately, but we, we found a way to get it going, and we lacked intensity early. Um, I think that's what happens when you go into one of those games. It's senior night for your opponent. And you don't really have a lot that you're playing for. You don't move in the standings. Uh, you're set in your spot. Um, your, your, your motivation is just to play good basketball. And, and I think we're a little too loose. Um, but once we, we came out of our, the first media timeout, um, we began to play very good basketball. Um, I thought there was a lot of growth last night. Um, Idaho's been a tough place for a lot of people to win. Um, Eastern Washington, the game goes down the final minute. Montana State loses there. So for us to come out of there with a double-figure win, I think, is a great sign. For you guys, the biggest thing it feels about this win, too, is it just kept this momentum going for you guys. Seven wins in your last eight games to kind of wrap up conference play. Like, is, you know, when you look at that, like, what's maybe the big, been the biggest catalyst why you guys have been able to flip that momentum? Well, we just, we just kept saying February. February, you want to be playing good basketball in February. Obviously, everyone wants to play well in November and December and January, but in a one-bid league, February is your most important month. And if you feel like you're playing good ball and you find a way to win a good portion of your February games, you give yourself a chance in March. And I think we've done enough to go into the conference tournament and feel like we have a chance. Um, we still can be better. We still can play better, which to me is also a good sign that we haven't necessarily peaked, but we're peaking. And as long as we continue to head in that direction, um, hopefully we peak on a Wednesday night. 
You guys, with this recent momentum streak, and like you mentioned, that's kind of what you're aiming for. Um, so, you know, for you guys, how do you maybe sustain that and carry that into the conference tournament? Is it similar to any teams you've had in the past? Like, can you compare it to anything like that, or is it pretty different? 14-15, year one. A very tough non-conference schedule. We're not sure how good we are or aren't. When we look back at that schedule, a lot of the teams we played were conference champions, uh, teams that were very competitive nationally, so the, the, the schedule ended up being a little stronger than we thought. As the season progressed, we just kept building confidence. The only difference is we looked up down the stretch and we were in striking distance of the championship and we won one. But I think that the way that we started off slow and, and built momentum down the stretch and, and, and worked our way into a championship game, um, there's some similarities to that. So hopefully we, we find the same result with a different ending. That, that first half of conference play was a lot of close losses, right? And you, you, we've talked throughout the season, you could see that your team was kind of right there. Why were they able to maybe kind of get over that hump in this latter part of the conference schedule? They learned how to win. Um, you know, it, it's when you have different experiences from different places, it's hard to come together as a group and win close games. If you can get luck early, you have a level of confidence in one another that carries you through. And I think that a lot of that is, is similar to what you saw with Eastern Washington this year's they won some close games early in conference opening weekend. Here they come from behind and, and, and pull a close one out. They go to Montana State and they, they hit a big three at, in the final possession. And then they had a couple other close games. And next thing you knew, they believed that they could win every night and, and they go on a streak. And um, a lot of that is just positive experiences. We had those in February as, a, as opposed to in January. So hopefully we we're trending in the right direction. So for you, like, you know, obviously you've been a part of so many Big Sky Conference tournaments and championship teams. And so what's the biggest part of this week and this tournament? Like, what, what do you guys maybe look for to do and accomplish? Like, what, what leads to success? Uh, I think managing um, the time between your final game and your first conference game uh, in terms of you want to be fresh. Um, but, but also at the same time, you still want to be in tip-top shape. You want to be clicking on all cylinders. So you have to have good practices. You have to have productive practices. And th this is one of those times where you prepare for three or four teams. And if you are fortunate to play those teams you think you're going to play, you should be pretty prepped. Um, and you just go out and try to execute. Overall, just how do you feel about your group, you know, the way they closed the regular season? And how do you feel about them going into the tournament? I feel great. Um, I, I think the biggest thing for us, we, we, we pass a pin around, right? And it's kind of a player of the game type of thing. And it might not be the guy that had the best stats. So a lot of times it might be someone who um, played a little outside themselves or showed improvement in a certain area. Or if there was um, a point of emphasis going into the game and that guy executed that point of emphasis, they get the pin. And I think the biggest thing for us in February, pretty much everyone that's checked into the game has had the pin. And that's a sign of a team that's trending in the right direction because everyone that's going in is contributing. As always, Travis, thanks so much for your time. Good luck the rest of the way in Boise. And don't go anywhere. We'll be joined by Grizz senior guard Josh Vasquez coming up. Get social with Grizzly fans and follow MTN Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. We're back on Grizzly Insider, and I'm excited to be joined by Grizz senior guard Josh Vasquez. Josh, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. So for you guys, uh, let's, we'll talk Idaho real quick. You guys finished off the season with a 15-point win over the Vandals. Just, you know, how'd that win feel to kind of end the regular season on, on a big win like that? Uh, I think it gives us a good momentum, um, something that we need going into the tournament. I think we've been playing a lot better. Uh, even though we had a slow start to the game, I feel like we picked it up, and that's going to like lead into having us like good momentum into the tournament. For to get a win like that, you guys capped it. I believe it was seven wins in your last eight games. You know, quite the turnaround in the second half of conference play. From the players' perspective, what do you think was maybe the biggest reason for that? Why were you guys able maybe to start winning close games and then you know kind of get some momentum here towards the end of the season? Um, I think our chemistry. We started playing well together. Uh, kind of figured each other out, just like any family. You got to go through some ups and downs before you figure out what you, like, you need to do. And that kind of like led to us winning, like, or having a really good like, season, I guess, in February. Was it, could you, could you see it coming? Because you know, you guys, a lot of those early conference games were close losses. It's not like you guys were getting blown out. There was the Sac State loss, but outside of that, everything was relatively close. Could you, could you sense that you guys were gonna be able to turn that corner at some point? Uh, I believe so, because I, I know we're a good team. And especially that Sac State loss, it wasn't like us. So I don't want to, sound like a downer but like it was either gonna go one of two ways it was gonna go up or down 
And I think after we had like a little conversation, I think it went up, and from there we started playing a lot, like really good basketball. For you, Josh, so your career is interesting because, you know, you started a ton as a freshman and then minutes have kind of fluctuated the last couple of years and then you've kind of refound your role this year as, you know, coming off the bench and scoring a lot of points and, you know, you have such a good three-point shot. For you, what, what has this season been like to kind of see, you know, that bounce back for you and kind of help lead this team? Um, just knowing, like, everybody's college career is going to be like a roller coaster ride. You never know what's going to happen. I'm just grateful for my opportunities. Um, I'm a firm believer in, like, everything that happens is for a reason. Um, this season, I feel like I've become uh, a pretty good role off the bench, and I'm, I'm happy for that. And I feel like I've, I've, I've been finding my stride a little bit more this, uh, this season. You, Josh, too, you know, how have you kind of stayed the course with that a little bit? Because, you know, it, it can be so taxing mentally, you know, when things aren't going well. And, you know, if your shot's not falling as an athlete, you know, you guys are so dependent on, um, you know, performance on the court. You know, how have you been able to stay with it uh, throughout these four years? Just being locked in mentally, it's, it, like you said, it's pretty tough. Um, our coaches staff does a good job of preparing us. Just essentially following their lead, um, just being a believer the whole time and just knowing everything's going to work out eventually. So, Josh, obviously you're one of the vets on this team. You've seen uh, a lot of Big Sky Conference tournaments in your time here. So, uh, wh what's the biggest thing for a team going into the tournament? Well, as you guys get ready, you have the momentum now. What's the biggest thing to take that next step as you guys get ready for a run here? Um, it's like another season. Like, anybody can beat anybody. You never know what's going to happen. You got to know nothing's going to be easy. and You got to go in with your A game because it's like the big stage. Everybody wants to perform. Are there any like learning lessons from the past Big Sky tournaments that you've experienced that this team can carry? Like, is there anything that kind of stands out that you guys have noticed? Uh, to be honest, it's kind of hard to say because every year's been different. You, like I said, you really don't know what's going to happen going into the tournament. Just try to go in with my A game because, I mean, I want to win. I'm pretty sure the whole team wants to win. Everybody wants to win. Do you guys utilize any of last year's finish to fuel you guys? Has that ever been a talking point? Do you guys think about that at all? Um, of course. Um, it didn't. And like we wanted to, especially a little bit early, uh, use that as motivation and fire to like go into this this year and try to surpass I guess what we did last year. For the team, you know, just when it's postseason play, just what's that locker room like? What's the atmosphere like knowing that every game is every game now really matters and you know any game could also be your last? Uh, I would say it's pretty intense. A lot of guys are locked in. Uh, I'm one of the guys that's more free, I guess, pre game, but it's just what I do. Um, just knowing everybody's coming to play, everybody knows what's on the line and just got to be ready. As you guys use these next few days to get ready for Boise, just what's the biggest thing for this group to, to stay locked in and how do you guys get ready for, you know, what's, it's March and the best time of the year? I uh, just want to say be ready to play. Uh, it's really nothing to that. Like our coaches, they, they say like they gave us a blue, the blueprint and it's like there's only so much you can say at this point. It's been a long season. Everybody knows what we got to do and we just got to go out and play. Ultimately, how do you guys feel, just feel going into Boise? You know, just with that momentum, seven of your last eight with wins, you know, just as a, as a group, how, do you, how are you guys feeling right now? Uh, I think we're feeling pretty good. Like, we're rolling. Got a decent amount of wins in a row. Um, good momentum, especially like this last one at Idaho. Uh, I feel like we're, we're, we're feeling pretty confident. Awesome. Well, Josh, good luck in Boise. Good luck to you and the rest of the team, and thank you so much for your time. And don't go anywhere. We'll be joined by Lady Grizz coach Brian Holsinger coming up. There's more coverage of the Grizzlies online anytime at montanasports.com. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, and we are joined by Lady Grizz coach Brian Holsinger. And Brian, we were just talking off camera, quite the harrowing experience for you guys this weekend to, to get to Portland and wrap up the regular season with three games in five days. Yeah, not ideal by any means, um, to say the least. I, I, was, I was telling you earlier that it's, it's, it's the worst travel experience. Um, by far, in my 23 years of coaching, um, yeah, it was a, it was a bit, it was interesting. I'm proud of our girls for kind of getting through it and still performing well here last night. You know, and obviously for those who don't know, the weather was really bad in Portland. You guys yeah. had to battle that long travel days to get to Portland. You got to the game losing a heartbreaker, lose to Sac State after that to get also get there. Long trip back to Missoula. You, you, you cap it off with a win over Idaho. Just what can you say about your girls kind of being resilient with so many factors outside of basketball kind of affecting the, the end of this regular season? Yeah, I'm proud of them. Um, I, told them I told them last night and I told them before yesterday's game, I'm like how they've handled the adversity has been really good. Um, obviously, we'd, we'd love to win. Um, but everybody wants to win those games and both are very close. Um, but 
how they handled it and how they responded last night. I was just so proud to, you know, as their coach, because that those are hard. That's it's a hard thing. It's not something that everybody has to go through. The freshmen, you know, just they they were like, whoa, this is what travels like, and I'm like, this is not what travels like. It's really not. I promise. And so I'm proud of the girls. They they handled adversity well, and that's that's the name of the game. So we'll talk about the Idaho game getting the win to end the regular season. Just you know, how big was that in a moment against a team like Idaho, who you know they're they're a lower seed, but it doesn't it's not really indicative of that program. So to to pull out a big win on Monday, what was that? Uh, what does that say about your team? Yeah, they. I mean, awesome for senior night. You know what I mean? Just great. Uh, Sammy and Katarina, they're both just fantastic, high character, great teammates, just awesome people who have just. Um, you know, been great Lady Grizz. And, and for us, it was, you know, Idaho is a very good offensive team. They just always are. And, and we really wanted to take away the three. Um, we were going to let Beyonce go one-on-one and, and she definitely had a game. There's no question about that. And so, um, you know, it's always interesting when you play a team like that, how they, how they execute and how they do. But we, you know, I was really proud in the fourth quarter. They got hot for a second there. We, we sustained, we executed down the stretch to really, um, it was a little more comfortable than the score looked. I mean, you know, up seven or eight here with about a minute to go, and they hit a couple shots, but really proud of how we executed down the stretch. So five seed, now going to the Big Sky Tournament, and boys, you guys will play Eastern Washington next Monday. What do you like about where your team's at right now in that, in that turnaround in the second half of conference and where the team sits right now heading into the biggest tournament of the year? I mean, I think for us, we, you know, even on that trip, let alone the travel, uh, we didn't have Keeley, Burton, Oliver, or we didn't have Haley Heward as well. So two people that are regular in our, in our rotation, both sustained concussions. We got Keeley back, um, and then hopefully we're going to get Haley back here this week. And so, you know, getting healthy is the main thing, getting rested from the long trip we just had, and then just, you know, amping up for, we, and we got to defend better, to be honest. We got to defend better last night. We gave up too many points, um, but if we can defend well, uh, I like where our offense is at right now. Uh, I think we have go- good momentum going into next week. So you, this will be your second year experience in the Big, Big Sky Tournament. You've obviously had a lot of experience with conference tournaments in the past. Mm-hmm. But was there anything about the tournament last year that kind of was new to you that you now know to expect this year? Anything kind of stand out? Yeah, uh, we were there too long last year. <clears throat> you know, live and learn. We, we, had, we were on the road, and so we flew directly there instead of coming back and then traveling again. Um, but we ended up being there too long. Uh, this, we've got it planned out better this year so that, we're, that we'll get there and it'll be a little bit more normal. Um, and so that's, that's one thing I know for sure. But it's a good tournament. And the, the, the format's completely different this year. So I don't know what to expect with that. They've changed up the format. I like uh, where we're at. You've got to win three games in three days. And, and that's pretty normal for tournaments I've been in, in the past. And, and yeah, I like our chances. What's the biggest thing with your team and getting them locked in, knowing you have, you have some senior and veteran leadership with this group that have experienced this before, and then the younger girls are going to get their first taste of it. So how do you get the whole team to lock in and maybe how do you le- maybe lean on some of those vets to get the whole team ready to go? You know, our leadership has been good. You know, it's, it's, it, and that, that's really crucial in these moments, uh, the experience of these things, what to expect. Uh, we're trying to keep it as normal as possible as we go into this tournament. But uh, we got to keep fresh legs. It's really important, the best you can, to keep fresh legs. We can play three times in three days um, just for shooting purposes. And that's why defense is such a big deal. You, you know, always have you know, one good game, one average game, and one bad game during those three games. And, and you got to figure out a way to win all three. And so those are, the, those are the main things. We'll work on execution. We'll work on the things that, for us, we've, worked, we've talked about effort, execution, and our response. And those are the things that we'll concentrate on this week. It's March. It's what you play for, right? Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's it's win or done, right? So it's an exciting time. Um, it's a fun time. We keep good perspective one game at a time and, and uh, just play as, as well as you can. Awesome. Well, Brian, as always, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on Grizzly Insider. Take coverage of the Grizz with you. Download our app for your favorite mobile device today. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Well, that wraps up our final Grizzly Insider of the season here on MTN. And thank you so much for tuning in for all things Grizz Athletics. UM is Boise bound, and both UM programs will play next Monday to open the tournament in the quarterfinals, with the Grizz men as the four seed taking on Idaho State, and the Lady Grizz as the five seed and matching up with Eastern Washington. All roads go through Boise, and MTN will carry 14 total games from the tournament, starting on Saturday in the first round. We'll see you there, as well as have all of your coverage on montanasports.com. Thanks again for joining us, and have a great evening.